Welcome to episode 16 of Paul Plays in Portugal, where today we're going to be playing two matches. The first match is against Boa Vista in the Taça de Portugal semi final. It's our second leg. We're 4 1 up after the first leg. It should be a formality, really. And it does look like we're going to be taking on Porto in the final, who we've had a lot of success against this season. They should be getting through their semi final as well. They're already 1 0 up after the first leg. And in the second match, we're going to play a league game at home against Vitoria de Setubal who are seventh in the table, we are top. I don't know how, but we are top of the table. A couple of episodes ago, I thought it was all over. But of course, in the last episode, we smashed Porto and Sporting and put ourselves back in contention. But I thought it kind of messed it up again because in the next get in the next match, we drew 3-3 against our old friends who we drew 5-5 against in the Tasta Liga second round. It was a crazy game. Wellington scored another two goals. He's on fire at the moment. Franco Lopez also scored, but you can see we did score in the 92nd minute. I thought that was the winner, but then an own goal in the 93rd minute gifted them a point. Straight from kickoff as well, that they managed to get the equaliser. It's, it's frustrating when this happens. Uh, my favourite word of my life, frustrating, that seems to be what I say. But look at that. How unlucky! Is that he dived like a crab, it hit the post, hit him on the back and, and went in and oh, typical. But it finished 3-3 and I thought it was all over, but fortunately Porto and Sporting have kind of thrown it away a little bit in the last few games. We managed to beat Braga 2 not really good win because we struggled against Braga historically. Goals from Wellington once again and a Nakajima penalty confirming victory. Then a really good 3-2 win. Topsy turvy game as you can see here. Bruno Tabata opened the scoring from the penalty spot. They got a goal back through a penalty themselves. Franco Lopez in the 44th minute made it 2-1 but they equalised in the 49th minute and it wasn't until the 88th minute that Franco Lopez popped up with the winning goal. He really is a phenomenal player. I, I, I can't believe we got him on loan really. I don't know why River Plate were loaning him out but their mistake because he's been absolutely sensational for us and I think he's got 25 goals now but this is a great ball from Nakajima and Lopez clinical keeper got hands to it but couldn't keep it out but then the best goal of the season so far was scored in this 4-1 away win they took the lead no sorry we took the lead through Nakajima in the 17th minute they got back into it but goals from Lopez Nakajima and Lopez once again Meant it was a bit of a, a rout in the end. Two goals from Nakajima, two goals from Lopez. But this was incredible. 92nd minute. I did post this on Twitter, actually. So some of you may have seen this. Uh, I'm not sure why the highlight's so long, but let's just watch what happens. But Avalos was involved. Two Argentinians involved in this goal. But, ah, oh, Lopez. It's a typical Argentinian goal. Look at this tackle from, from Avalos. He slide tackles it. Passes it up to Lopez, and this is amazing. Look at this. One round one man, round a second man. Wellington's, you know, trying to catch him up, and he just finishes it all by himself. He had, like, three players to pass to, but he's like, no, get out the way. Move aside, Maradona. Move aside, Messi. I'm taking this and scoring an unbelievable goal from inside his own half. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely stuff. So, yeah, we are top of the table. We're ahead of Porto on head-to-head, -head, and we're only one point ahead of Sporting. So it's very tight. Benfica out of it again. Sorry, Benfica fans watching this, but you've been, you've let you, you've let yourself. Well, you haven't let yourself down. Benfica have let you down because they've been dreadful on this save, which is very surprising. Anyway, today let's get on with our match against Boa Vista. You can see here we've got a very equal record: three wins to Boa Vista, three wins to us, and one draw. We're in excellent form. They're in inconsistent form. I am putting out a weaker team, so we can we might lose this. But hopefully we won't lose like 4-0 and go out. Um, Given Chiarini, our Argentinian backup goalkeeper, a go. Pessoa's going to play right back. Fernandez is coming to centre-back, our backup centre-back. Kakuba's playing, Pedro Sarr's playing, Denaire's playing, uh, Stanley's playing. But that's because Wellington's injured. Mesquita is suspended as well. So it was between Avalos and Pessoa to play right back. Uh, Rui Costa is going to play on the left. I am playing our main man Lopez up front. 25 goals this season. What a star he is. Still going to attack even though we're playing a slightly weaker team. And Boa Vista are tough. To, we have lost against him three times on this series, in this series. And we're playing a few unfit players. But I still have confidence that we can, we can get a result here. 
and marched through to the final quite comfortably. But maybe I'm a bit op been too overly optimistic or arrogant there. Uh, we, we shall find out. Anyway, let's let's play this. Uh, by the way, a few days ago, I did put a poll on the community section of my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know what that is, go and check it out. Just go on my YouTube channel. There's a little button called community where I post a few things. A bit like the Twi the YouTube version of Twitter, I suppose. Anyway, I put a poll on there about the introduction music because there's been a few people saying, oh, I don't really like it. It's Brazilian rather than Portuguese. I just like the sound of it. And 77% of people said they like it and I should keep that introduction music. So that's just... The way it is, as Gribbin almost opens the scoring. Um, if you don't like it, then maybe just skip the introduction. That's all I can say. But, you know, the people have spoken. And, uh, yeah, I didn't realise it was Brazilian. Well, I didn't really intend it to be any nationality type of music. I just liked the sound of it. And that's why I selected it. I found it on uh, via my YouTube network, uh, non-copyrighted music, of course. But with Vista coming forwards, half an hour into this game, are they going to open the score? And it's crossed in, headed away by Ruben Fernandez. Denaire heads on. He's not really played much this season. I think he, I think his contract's up at the end of the season. Not 100% sure about that. This looks dangerous. I feel there's going to be a goal here. But a great tackle. And Vinicius, our young Brazilian, slams it up the pitch. Lopez can't get on the end of it, though. And they're still on the ball. Are we going to get rid of this properly? Or is a goal coming? I think a goal's coming. Oh, no. Kakuba does well that time. I'm a bit bunged up today for some reason. I still haven't really shifted my cold that I've had. As that's headed away. Gribbin. Up to Lopez. Look. Come on, guys. Counter. Lopez takes it on himself. That's poor. He should have passed it that time. He was, tr he was thinking about his goal in the last match, wasn't he? But he was a bit sluggish in possession there. And that's poor from him. And here come Boavista, an injured player coming forwards. And Suk, good save by Chiarini. Pretty empty stadium here at Boa Vista. And they've still got those picnic... Every single stadium has those picnic benches and giant football thing. Half time, nil nil. I'll, I'll take that, to be honest. The attacking midfield has been pretty awful. Oh, Chiarini looks stressed. I mean, he played... He's made a good save in there. What have I clicked on? Oh, I've stressed out Chiarini. That's not good to stress out a goalkeeper, is it? I will take off Stanley. I am going to take him off and bring on Bruno Tabata as an inside. We're going to play two inside forwards. Change the width to balanced. Okay. This might be a bit of a boring game if it finishes 0-0. But I'll take that because we're going through to our first final of the season. We have the chance to win the Portuguese double here, which is just remarkable, isn't it? As they almost open the scoring, hitting the bar there. Uh, I'm going to bring Lopez off and throw Rui Costa up front and then bring on Vinegar on the left as a winger. Just game management. Managing the squad as well, because we've got some big games coming up in the league. We should be going through. We can't throw it away now, surely, with 25 minutes to go. You never know with my defence. They keep in possession nicely here. Looking quite dangerous. We're holding them at bay at the moment, but this looks like a dangerous position and somehow headed over the bar. They've had two clear, three clear-cut chances, two half chances, but they're, they're still drawing with us. Uh, last substitute then. I will bring on Marcel for Pedro Sars on a yellow card. Well, this has been a boring game. But boring is kind of what I wanted today. I didn't want it to be a high energetic second leg where there was an opportunity for them to get back into it. This is just perfect. I wanted it to be boring, low scoring, because we had the massive aggregate lead. And the refs blown the whistle. We're through to our first ever final. That is just brilliant. Congratulations, lads. And Porto have also gone through. So massive final on the last day of the season. We've got Benfica and Porto to play in our last two games of the 2018-19 season. So I've had this little news article come through to my inbox. So these are the last few games for each of the teams in the title challenge. We've all got okay endings. We've probably got the hardest because we've got Benfica. If you look at Porto, we've both, well, we've both got uh, Vittorio de Setable. They've got teams all mid-table. Nothing to play for. Sporting have a team, Maritimo, who are in trouble from relegations. That could be tough. Uh, but we've got 7th place and 4th I mean, uh, and mid-table teams as well. We should be winning those three. I think we've got the toughest, toughest ending. Can we win it? 
It's time to vote for Portuguese Player of the Year, and two of my players are up for it. Meaning I can't actually vote for them, and I, I don't really want to vote for <laughs> the Porto player. I think Lopez and Wellington deserve it, although look at the average rating from the Porto player, it's, that's really good. But 17 goals in the league for Lopez, 11 assists, 11 goals in the league for Wellington, and 17 assists. Not bad, eh? But I have to vote for the Porto player. Young player of the year, Franco Lopez is up for that as well. Wellington's not match fit for this game, that is a blow. But we've got strong form. They've got inconsistent form. So I'm hoping our team will be strong enough. I need, do need to make some changes, though. I'm going to stick with Stanley on the right-hand side then instead of Wellington as he's still injured. Uh, Bruno Lamas is back in the team. Marcel's back in the team. Posignolo's back in the team. Ferreira, Nakajima. This is a strong lineup. I think we've got enough to beat them. These are the lineups, and let's get on with this. We're going to go attacking from the start, of course. It's the way we play. Let's hope for a bit more of an exciting game compared to the Boa Vista one. Hmm, it's boring so far. Still plenty of time left in this match. And we've won a corner, it's Gribbin, plays it all the way up to Lopez. Lopez, oh, he's just hit it wide. Oh, this is boring. I was hoping for more excitement today. We've won another corner, Gribbin all the way back. Oh, that's poor that time. And they're countering. This is a worry. Get back, guys, get back. Who's this? Not running back, Llamas. Oh, what a tackle by Posignolo, but they've still got the ball. It's blocked, and Gribbin, now it's our turn to counter. Gribbin up to Lopez, work your magic. Here he goes, he's through, and he scores. 1-0. Lovely finish from Lopez. Still had, a, still had a lot to do when Gribbin gave him the ball. Let's have a look at this again. Then. So Gribbin picks it up, puts it down the line for Lopez to run onto. Still a lot to do from here. Cuts inside, and tucks it. Past the keeper for his 26th goal of the season in all competitions. Gribbin's been a good signing on loan from Manchester United. Uh, the wingers aren't working today. I think maybe we're playing more balanced width. We're, oh, maybe I should go standard. That's my philosophy at the moment, isn't it? Going standard when we're winning at halftime. I'm going to continue with two attack. We should be beating the likes of... Well, we should be beating a seventh place team, considering we're top of the table, but... You never know, they're a decent outfit. Free kick, up steps Callum Gribbin and hits the bar, really unlucky. I will actually take him off because he's pretty tight. I'm going to throw on Bruno Tabata. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Nakajima behind the striker and Bruno Tabata as a conventional winger on the left-hand side. And maybe, maybe I should go standard now. Let's go standard. It's been a boring game. It's been a strange episode because there's been lots of excitement. Last episode, so many goals against big teams and today boring 0-0 and now just a boring 1-0 against Vittoria de Setable. but that's what we need to do we need to grind out these results don't we let's make some more subs uh, Nakajima's not had a good game unfortunately Stanley hasn't either uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw him vinegar for Kakuba bring on some fresh legs at full back and Marcel's going to come off for Pedro Sar. Some more fresh legs in the midfield for the last few minutes. Vinicius takes a free kick. It's into Bruno Tabata. Vinegar's on the overlap. Here he goes. It's an... Oh! Oh, it's one of those fluky goals. It's a cross, but it goes in. You don't see as many of these now. It used to be a bit too prolific on the old games. That's the first one I've actually seen on FM18, I think. I can't recall seeing one of those cross goals. So that's that's all right. And I'm going to take it, of course. 2-0. That confirms victory, surely. <laughs> Lovely. Can we make it three? Bruno Tabata all the way back to Lopez. And he's knocked into Nakajima. Oh, that is, what is wrong with him today? And two minutes to go. If they get a goal here, there is a chance for them to steal a draw. But Vinegar easily mops that up. And now Bruno Tabata charges forward. Puts it over the top for Lopez to run onto. He's all by himself. Cuts inside. Lopez. Oh, he's hit the bar. What? Oh, that would have been a beautiful goal. Really unlucky. Probably would have been a little bit of an undeserved goal. Because although they've done nothing, we haven't done a huge amount today either, have we? Are they going to get a consolation goal? 40 seconds to go. This looks dangerous. It's crossed in. And it's run out of play. This is a really good win because this is the... Well, the second toughest team, theoretically, we should be playing before the end of the season. Of course, Benfica on the last day is the hardest challenge 
They've already beaten us once this season. They have underperformed, so perhaps we can get a win against them. 2-0 win today, though. Wasn't the prettiest of victories, but I think we did deserve it, despite the fluky second goal. Sporting and Porto still need to play their 30th game. But that's how we end today's episode. The next episode is going to be... Should we have two episodes to end it? Let me just have a think. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play two matches behind the scenes. Tondela and Rio Ave. And then I'm going to take on Mario Rentz and Benfica in episode 17. And in episode 18, we have to do a special final episode, don't we, for our match against Porto. Let's not just bung them together because these are two separate competitions we're going for here. So... Two matches in the next episode, and then episode 18, our first ever cup final with Porto Minetzi. Hope you're looking forward to that. Please hit the like button if you're still enjoying the series. That'd be very much appreciated. Until next time, enjoy FM18. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you very soon.